So as I said, this is hill climbing and uh, you're stand, you have a valid solution. And what you do every step is uh, you, you get a better solution, right? You just, uh, your goal is to get better solutions. And how do you start? You start with any valid solution. Maybe the zero solution is valid. Um, and when do you stop? You stop when you can't go up anymore, right? Reasonable algorithm. Problem. And there's two problems with this algorithm. Any guess what the problems are? Exponential time is one. Is this the optimal solution? What? Um, you mean over here? Yeah, the other problem, one, is suppose you just remember the the, the flow is, is a number, right? A value. And if it has uh, a thousand digits, then it, the value can go up to two to the th end of the thousand. Uh, no, no, it's end of the thousand, right? Which if that's exponential. And if you only made progress of one each step, right? Then it could take exponential time, right? So that's a problem. And the other problem is what we found first is what we call a local maximum. It's not necessarily a global maximum, right? Everybody got that? So these are the two problems with gradient descent. And does, I don't know if you, do you guys know uh, in machine learning, the, the method of choice these days is called gradient descent, right? And that's what this is, right? Gradient descent, instead of going up, we're going down, right? In which direction do you go? You go in the direction that improves your solution the best, right? You have a solution, you look around locally to say, which direction, how do I change my solution to keep it valid while increasing my value the most? And you head in that direction. So that's called gradient in the direction of gradient is like slope, right? In the direction of slope. That's the Yeah, you're getting more complicated, right? Learning rate has to do if you take too big of a step, you pass the the bottom and we're minimizing error instead of maximizing flow. But but um, here, our step size is how far do we change, right? We change until we, one of the, you know, you push as much flow until something's at capacity, right? So that's how we're choosing our step size. Right, local minimum, global maximum. Oh, and... Um, Right, so we came up with an algorithm. Now the question is, will well, let's the, first we, one we have to worry about running time, but we're going to more or less ignore this next, this course, um, unless you in my in the grad course I I do running time, and um, during office hours if you want we could do running time, but um, but. We are going to ask, do we find a, a local minimum, local maximum, right? Do we get stuck, right? And so getting stuck is a real problem, all right? To prove that the algorithm doesn't work, you just have to come up with one counterexample, all right? So remember, this is the example where we got, we were happy with max flow of a flow of, of uh, 51, right? And what's this graph here? It looks very different than this graph, but if you pay attention, it's the same graph. I just moved the nodes around, right? And why did I do that? Um, well, because I wanted to, I don't know. We're going to follow the algorithm again, um, and we're going to get stuck without the maximum flow, all right? So let's do that. Here it is all 
written out, not animated, right? What we're going to first do is we're going to push flow of two along that path, the straight path. That's why I rearranged it, right? So it says, oh, well, let's do straight, right? So that's flow of two. And then you try to push flow up and you push flow down. And if you pay attention, you'll see you get stuck, right? And uh, do I talk about it more? Um, right here, we we made a bad choice, right? We put, we went, we chose a, a path that led, to, that then we pushed two through this edge and it was a bad choice. And we could try to think of ways of not making such bad choices, but that sounds really hard, right? How can you say that this path is, right? Um, you could back up and try something else, but uh, that then you might have exponential time. And the motto, the law of, of uh, hill climbing is you never go down, right? You never get a worse solution, right? Because as soon as you, get, you go down, then who knows how long it's going to take you, right? Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is suppose you had longer legs, right? And then, so why did you stop at the top of the hill? Because you could not step and go up, right? But if you had longer legs, then you could step more places and maybe you then, it changes the whole problem, right? So suppose these are all solutions and you're standing there and you're able to step in those places, right? Then if all of those places um, go down, then you're at a local maximum, right? And that's the topology and you're now, you're now here and you, where you step can't go down, right? Is that, and if we suddenly just make your step bigger, then it just slightly changes the topology of what you can do in one step, right? And now, that right now, what we got to prove is that we're going to define a bigger step and then prove that you always find the maximum, right? Everybody get the, what we're trying to do here? How are we doing for time? Feels like we're almost there. Seven minutes. I just like I know or something. All right, everybody good? All right. So we go back to this example and see where the mistake is. And the mis I'm going to say the mistake is that we pushed two along that edge, right? And in, in the in the correct solution, there's only one along this edge. And in this solution, there's two along that edge, which is allowed, but it makes us stuck, right? If you kind of see, well, why are we stuck as well? We can't do this, we can't do that, and we can't do that, we're all stuck, right? Does that make sense? And if you, if you recall what the algorithm is, is in every step, we might increase the flow in a step in an edge, but we never decrease the flow in a step, right? So once there's two along that edge, it's never coming down, right? And that's why we're stuck. Everybody see the problem? So we're gonna have to change the algorithm to allow you to decrease the flow through an edge. And the panic is what? That you're not allowed to decrease the flow overall, right? You have to get a better solution. And if you're decreasing the flow through an edge, how is the total flow going up, right? So that's the game, is to find a way that allows you to decrease the flow in one at particular edges while increasing the flow overall, right? Does that make sense? 
are right. Right? And I think this just says everything that I said. All right. So now, you know, of this, I, you know, I've made lots of slides in my life, as you can imagine. And I think the topic that I've redone the most is this topic right here. And somehow people get confused. And so I add more slides and then people are still confused. And, and I try different methods. And now my method is minimal slides. I'm gonna just tell you, and then you're gonna have to go home and think about it yourself, right? Because it's just the way it is. All right, so we wanna think about not only how much flow do we currently have, but how we're allowed to change that flow, all right? So you see, how much can I increase the flow by? Well, it's clearly 75 minus 15, right? Now you ask, how much can I decrease the flow by? And you might say 15. Anybody want to give me a better answer? You might say 10. Anybody want to give me a better answer? I currently have a flow of 15. If I decrease it by one, it goes to 14. If I decrease it by 15, it goes to zero. Can I decrease it further? Yes. I can decrease it to negative 10. I can decrease it from 15 to negative 10. All right, so let's try it again, right? Let's think about flow is where you are along in this path. If you're at the zero, then your current flow is zero. And if you're way over at 75, right, what is our maximum? You could be way over at 75, or you could be 10 in the other direction, right? And a, what is negative 10? What does negative 10 flow in this direction mean is really you got flow of 10 in this direction, right? And this is kind of, you know, when I said the math was easier when you allow flows to be negative, this is kind of what I was, you know, what does a flow of negative really mean? Everybody see that? All right, so here, right here, right? So here we go. I currently have a flow of 15. Here I have a flow of negative 10, am I allow a flow of negative 10? Well, really that's a flow of 10 in the other direction. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, so if I'm standing here, what does that mean? It means, well, standing, uh, let's see, where are we doing? Stand, well, standing here means I'm flowing in this direction of 15, right? So standing here means I'm flowing in this direction of negative 10. And what does that mean? Well, it really means you're flowing in the other direction of 10. Does that answer your question? Line is, right, so it's the difference between um, position versus velocity versus acceleration, right? And, and let's not have that guy up there line be position. Let's have it be velocity, right? So now his velocity, that's a good word, and I keep changing the slides. So, so maybe I'll add on to this slide this is a velocity graph, right? So, so you can see his velocity, that's very good. I keep, right, that's velocity of negative 10, right? We don't know where he is. In fact, we've never talked about how much water is gone. It's all about velocities, right? So, so here he has a velocity, a flow of negative 10, right? 
So if he's here and we push five more, then he goes up to 20, right? And if we if we push minus five, then he goes down to 10, right? And which is equivalent to pushing five in the other direction, right? And if we push minus 20 in that direction, then he goes to minus five, which is equivalent to pushing 20 in that direction, which gets him from a flow of 50, you know, a velocity of 15 to a velocity of minus five, right? Everybody kind of follow that? So um, that's equivalent, right? Flow of minus five is equivalent to a flow of five. And so now we need to build our augmentation graph, right? How much can we change the flow to the right well, it's clearly 75 minus 15. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're running out of time. So. When you add 5, that means it goes to 20, right? The velocity changes from 15 to 20, right? And then you go back, when you subtract the negative 5, it changes the velocity to 16, right? No, these are. Two different examples. Two, same example, right? So these are velocities, and the reds are actually accelerations, right? If I accelerate forward by minus five, really I slow down by five, right? So I'll, how about I'll add the word velocity and acceleration. Are we out of time? I think we probably are. So in next class, we'll redo it with the new words, velocity and acceleration.